Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Holly Prendergast. And I'm Liz Scopoletti. And here's your news now. Earlier this week, a man was struck and killed by a train at the Overbrook Station, SEPTA reported. He apparently slipped and fell in the path of the oncoming train. The incident happened around 4 p.m. Philadelphia sports legend Joe Frazier passed away after losing his battle with liver cancer. He was diagnosed with the disease a little over five weeks, weeks ago and has been in hospice care since. Frazier was on the winning side of the so-called fight of the century after becoming the first man to defeat Muhammad Ali. Mayor Michael Nutter was re-elected to a second term earlier this week, the Associated Press reported, based on early voting projections. Nutter easily defeated little-known GOP rival Karen Brown. Brown, a former math teacher who switched parties to challenge Nutter, was only able to gather 22% of the vote. That was your trip around the block, and now here's Liz with top stories across the nation. Thanks, Holly. Earlier this week, President Obama's Agricultural Department announced a new 15 cent tax on all fresh Christmas trees to support a new federal program to improve the image and marketing of Christmas trees. David R. Shipman, the Administrator of Agricultural Marketing, announced that the Secretary of Agriculture will appoint a Christmas tree promotion board. The purpose of the board is to run a program of promotion, research, evaluation, and information designed to strengthen the Christmas tree industry's position in the marketplace. An aircraft carrier-sized asteroid zoomed past Earth earlier this week after just missing Earth. Although countless asteroids pass by the planet all the time, this came extremely close, traveling at speeds of over 8 miles a second. Attorney General Eric Holder was challenged after the fast and furious gun running operation failed to catch illegal firearm trade. Over 30 members of Congress have called for Holder's immediate resignation, but does not consider the measure a means for resignation. And that was your trip across the nation, and now here's Holly for your trip around the world. Thanks, Liz. In the latest report from the International Atomic Energy Agency, Iran has been working on nuclear weapons since last year, including efforts to shrink a warhead to fit atop its ballistic missiles, a report from the United Nations inspector said. A recent intelligent leak suggested Israel would preemptively strike if necessary to keep Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. Silvio Berlusconi, Italy's prime minister, pledged earlier this week that he would step down after Parliament passes a new financial stability law that will implement new austerity measures requ required by the European Union. This announcement comes after a humiliating vote in the Parliament after the majority revolted, stripping him of the majority. And that was your trip around the world. Location is starting their first ever cooking segment. This week, Holly is going to show us how to make mashed potatoes and cranberry sauce. Hey everyone, I'm Holly Prendergast here on location for our first ever cooking segment. For the next three weeks leading up to Thanksgiving, we're going to be cooking mashed potatoes, we're going to learn how to make cranberry sauce, of course the main entree, which is turkey, and finally on week three, we're going to make dessert. This week we're going to be focusing on the mashed potatoes and cranberry sauce, so let's get right to it. What you're going to need to make the cranberry sauce is one cup of sugar, one cup of orange juice, and one package of fresh cranberries. Once you have all of your ingredients together, what you're going to do is take a medium saucepan, put that over medium heat on the stove, and dissolve the sugar into the orange juice. Once you do that, you're going to stir the cranberries into it and cook until they start to pop. And that's going to take about 10 to 12 minutes. Once that happens, remove it from the heat and transfer it to a bowl or serving dish. And then the cranberry sauce will begin to thicken as it cools. Once it's cooled down, you can get ready to eat it and enjoy. Now that we've finished with the cranberry sauce, let's move on to the mashed potatoes. What you're going to need for the mashed potatoes are six medium-sized potatoes peeled and cubed, but that number could change depending on how many people you're cooking for. A half a cup of warm milk, a quarter cup of butter or margarine, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and a dash of pepper. Once you have all of your ingredients together, you're going to bring the potatoes to a boil in a saucepan. Once they're cooked thoroughly, you're going to add all of your other ingredients together in a large pot 
and mash until light and fluffy. Once you're finished mixing everything together and mashing your potatoes, you can then put them on a serving dish and they're ready to eat. Thanks everyone for tuning in this week. Be sure to tune into location next week and learn how to make your very own turkey. And now let's check in with Jimmy for your weekly Tech Connection. Thanks, Holly. On Thursday, November 3rd, Apple's voice control assistant Siri experienced an outage. According to CNN, Siri stopped functioning for five hours because of an apparent server outage. An iPhone 4S exclusive feature, Siri requires an internet connection to understand and process all voice commands. Apple has not publicly commented on the reported outage. If a Maryland-based company is successful, most of the speed bumps and rumble strips you see on the road today may be helping to generate electricity. Called the Motion Power Strip, this technology harvests kinetic energy from cars and trucks and converts it into electricity. The power generated can be used for streetlights, construction crews, highway call boxes, and other emergency equipment on the side of the road. New Energy Technologies, the developer of the Motion Strip, envisioned their system as a way to generate clean, green energy for cities. After a five-month renovation, Apple unveiled the new Streamline Glass Cube at their Fifth Avenue retail store in New York City this past Friday. Using only 15 panes of glass rather than the 90 used in the original cube, the new cube is seamless in appearance. Along with the $6.6 .6 million cube, Apple has also up upgraded the plaza around their flagship store by installing new water drains and pavers while removing the small decorative posts that have previously surrounded the base of the cube. That's all I have for now. Stay plugged in right here for the latest tech news. Now back to Liz and Holly. Thanks, Jimmy. And now let's go to Danielle for your tip of the week. Thanks, Liz. With the holiday shopping season right around the corner, many of us will start to shop for gifts for family and friends. You may think at first that your list isn't too long, but once you start making shopping trips and competing with other shoppers, it may seem as though you will never be finished. The holiday shopping season is fun, but at the same time, it can be a nightmare. To avoid all the frustrations, you need to start shopping as early as you can. That way you will have more time to relax this holiday season. Another thing to look for is spending. Be on the lookout for sales. Because it is the holiday season, there will be tons of sales. Also, take advantage of in-store coupons that get sent to your email. It is worth it to print it out and bring it with you. You will be amazed at how much money you will save by smart shopping. Then, the, with the extra money, you can buy yourself a gift too. That's your tip of the week. Back to you, Holly. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's go to Mary Kate with your weekly sports update. On Saturday, November 7th, the women's soccer and volleyball teams were named the Colonial Safe Athletic Conference champions. The Cabrini women's soccer team entered the conference ranked fourth seed as they defeated the second seed Newman University 1-0. The girls will face Springfield in the NCAA tournament this Saturday. For the third consecutive year, the Cabrini College volleyball team won the CSAC title defeating the number two seed Newman University Knights 3-0. The Cabrini College Volleyball team will face Juniana College in the first round of the NCAA tournament. As for professional sports, this NBA lockout is still being under wraps. Players said Tuesday that they wouldn't accept the deal that was offered and asked to negotiate again before Wednesday afternoon's deadline. Commissioner Stern said if they can convince the players to accept the 50-50 split, that would be a significant win for them. But if they are unwilling to accept the changes the players are looking for on the system issues, they could be pretty far away from this conclusion of this lockout. That's all I have for you this week. Now back to Holly and Liz. Thanks, Mary-Kate. And now let's check in with Melissa for your entertainment news. Thanks, ladies. Enough talk on Kim Kardashian for now. I'm quite sure she'll be fine. In other entertainment news, Conrad Murray was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter, which leaves family, friends, and fans of Michael Jackson happy knowing that justice was served. Waiting on his sentence, Murray is being held in custody without bail in the medical ward because he is seen as a high-profile prisoner. And according to the Washington Post, there's a possibility his time could be shortened due to overcrowding issues in California's prison system. Do they really think that hauling Lizzie Lohan away for only 30 days would teach her a lesson? Probably not. Before she went to do her time, she redid her photo shoot for Playboy magazine and went full frontal? Yes, and according to Excess Hollywood, the spread is very tasteful. Well, she will be on the cover of the January-February issue. Heavy D suddenly passed away at the age of 44. Some are saying he had a heart attack at the hospital, but according to Perez Hilton, the rapper, the rapper was battling pneumonia. 
The 20-year-old woman continues to believe that Justin Bieber is the father of her baby, so he has decided to take a DNA test once he gets back to the States. And after a probation hearing, Chris Brown will continue to do community service for his 2009 charge with assault on Rihanna. Look for more entertainment updates next week. I am Melissa Wett. Now back to Holly and Liz. Thanks, Melissa. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Liz Scopoletti. And I'm Holly Prendergast. Have a great week, Cabrini.